The dogs of war are barking, the hounds of hell they greet, the tired of evil rising, the lions are in the street. That was a verse from one of Gary Lee Gaston's many poems. They often accompany his abstract and action paintings. Unlike his landscapes, these paintings aren't peaceful and serene. They're thought-provoking, challenging, unsettling. They may even encourage you to do some further research. And they're also bloody good. Episode 3, Abstract and Action Pieces. The dogs of war are barking, the hounds of hell are loose. Round and round the carousel, rabbit run the hounds of hell. The horsemen are parading, the evil that men do. Wisdom's name is bloodied, the conqueror's aim is true. The dogs of war are barking, the hounds of hell they greet. The tide of evil rising, the lions are in the street. Many of Gary's abstract works deal with the unsettling concept of a future apocalypse or Armageddon as prophesied by Nostradamus and the biblical book of Revelation. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are a particular favourite. The white horse conquering came, the red horse reared, its nostrils flared, the black horse breath was dank. Death, the pallid horse did ride, before the ferry sank. Thrice dice of ice on the river sticks. The ferryman cast his six six six. The most complete and complex exploration of these concepts is in this piece, the last act of the World Circus. There is so much going on here, it's fascinating and very clever. At the centre is the prophet Nostradamus. To his left is the ferryman from Greek mythology. Of course there's the four horsemen, but they're riding carousel horses to fit the whole circus theme. The carousel verse from Gary's apocalyptic poem is beautifully written in script. Gary spent years as a professional sign writer in his 20s and 30s. There are different characters and villains from history scattered throughout the painting. The pieces of the jigsaw are falling apart. To me, this is a perfect metaphor for the strain that mankind has put on nature's delicate balance. A central feature of the picture is the clones balancing on a tightrope, reflecting mankind's precarious situation and there's no safety net in sight. There's clever use of many double images. For example, each of the eyes belongs to two soldiers. The angels' faces can be seen in the wings of the birds and there is a skull formed between the wings of the two angels. There is also the Jesus face. For as long as I can remember, this painting has been in my father's studio. It's quite large. It's a reproduction of a photo taken by someone of some melting snow. 
they swore they could see the face of Christ in there. As a child, I couldn't see it. To me, it's quite obvious now. I've noticed the Jesus face in quite a few of my father's apocalyptic pieces. I think he's put it in there for those who take more than just a passing glance. It's a little ray of light, a subtle message of hope. These monoprints show another side to Gary's creativity. Random colours are smeared on a glass plate, a print is taken, and then the artist's imagination goes to work. As a youngster, Gary introduced me to all the classic westerns. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Magnificent Seven, Shane. This enthusiasm extended to the bush rangers and outlaws of early colonial Australia, and it's reflected in many of his historical action pieces and poems. Breaking through the saplings, sliding down the draw, where the pink dust rises, rides the bold outlaw. Now I see the troopers breaking o'er the ridge. There the bolt of azure over gunning bridge. There the shots go ringing, echo up the rill. There the birds stop singing on the gunning hill. Crashing down the far side, metallic in their fall, sends the flint stones flying, rides the bold Ben Hall. But they will not catch him, not the bold Ben Hall, as the shadows lengthen from the blue gums tall. Traps are weary flagging as he takes the far side ridge. Everything is quiet again, down by Gunning Bridge. Gary has also drawn inspiration from other moments of Australian history, such as the life of Daisy Bates, wife of Breaker Morant. and the Eureka Stockade. Have you heard about Eureka, Ballarat and Bendigo, where the miners scratched a living in the days of long ago? Let me tell you of Eureka and the miners on the hill, where the traps were always coming and the miners' rights were nil. They built a little barricade, they made a little flag, made a pledge together and never thought to lie raised the flag, rallied round, said that they would die, but never would they give to a king across the sea who would tolerate injustice and call it liberty. There is also this poignant Gallipoli-based piece titled Letters from Lucy. The letters have been handwritten by Gary, aged, and stuck to the painting. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it around. Next time, we'll have a look at some of Gary's commercial successes, including his 27 years with the Christmas pageant and 10 years with the Tour Down Under. Until then, try a little bit of abstract thinking. Bye for now.